Hi guys, I wanted to do this video because a lot of you think that I don't like Ngozi Okonjo Ewela, I don't like Igbo women and I, I'm jealous and this and that. And I think I want to clarify this because some of you even said, oh, I suddenly know her because she's successful. No, 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 guys, we go way back. You see the life I've lived, Kemi Olunoya, I've lived my life in the United States and Canada. Coming back to Nigeria, many of you didn't know me when I was over there. You now think... How come this happened? How come that one happened? Kemi knows everybody. First of all, you have to be focused. That's my hashtag for 2021. Being focused will make you understand people better. Don't judge people based on what they tell you about them. Okay, discover people, know who they are. In my own case, I've had a fabulous life. I've lived mostly because my father was a politician. As a young man, middle-aged man and as an elderly man i got to travel the world i got to see people meet people you know ordinary things that many of you wouldn't be able to do like traveling to mina niger state to visit babangida with my dad or going to the alafin's palace with my dad do this with my dad do that with my dad many of those things were done when they could be done others you know happened when they happened i met people along the way without my dad or without my family I discovered a lot and that came with journalism. Now let me tell you about Ngozi Okunje Wela, okay? First of all, let me clarify something. Ngozi is not the one that's my friend. It's her sister, Njide, and her brothers, Chichi and company. They have like seven brothers, two girls. What happened, okay, even I have to know some of the stories from my own family, all right? You see, the Okunje family, Ngozi's father and mother, okay, they were at University of Ibadan when we were growing up when we were young, when we were all babies, okay, they had Ngozi first, and then they decided they want to go to school, they want to lecture, they're academicians, they're, they're like intelligent, educated people. At the end of the day, okay, they now had Njide seven years after Ngozi. Okay, so that's why there's a gap between Njide. Njide is the one that's my friend, okay? Now then they started having the others, the boys, the seven boys, Chichi and company, sorry, company. At the end of the day, I'm going to continue the story in a few minutes so that you can better understand exactly okay what i was talking about i'm not jealous of her <laughs> i'm proud so wait part two okay so i was talking about how what's my relationship exactly with the okonjo iwela uh, you know ngozi injiria and all that you know so basically you meet people when you're young you meet them again somewhere and then maybe when you're old life revolves that way all right look at femi fani Kaede, for example i make femi fani Kaede as a kid he was five i was two the coup his father was taken by the army all that stuff then i met femi in school in london and i haven't seen femi since then i haven't seen fani Kaede for 38 years but we talk on the phone three four times a day internet dms everything and it's just, all I need is to just go to Abuja now. Femi has invited me three or four times, but I just haven't had the time or something happen or blah, blah, blah. I'll see Femi, believe me, we're gonna meet this year. At the end of the day, let's go back to Ngozi. You see, when Ngozi's mother and father left University of Ibadan and all the kids were growing up, okay? Like I said, there's a seven year gap between the two sisters. Okay, Njide, my friend. I happened to meet Njide again in America when we were younger. Okay, when I say younger, in the early 90s, okay, Injury happened to be my next door neighbor. In the same building, we're living in Monument Street in Baltimore, Maryland. And it's like we now pass crossed again. Okay, at that time, Injure Okonjo married a guy called Fred Udochi, and Injure became Mrs. Fred Udochi, another one, Mrs. Injude Udochi. Okay, Injude didn't really hyphenate her name like her big sister. And I remember at that time, her big sister to marry somebody from Southern Maryland, Dr. Iweala. So she became Ngozi Okunje Iweala. They lived in Southern Maryland. We lived in Baltimore, towards the north. They had their kids, and I watched Njide have all her kids. Two daughters and the oldest son, Chichi. You know, we literally raised our kids together. Me, my son, Oinlade, everybody, you know. And then after Monument Street, we moved to a, a townhouse settlement in Woodlawn, and Njide and myself were also neighbors there. We just moved, all moved there and we're all still in the same neighborhood. These kids all grew up together. My oldest son, Annie, is 34 today, February 17, 2021. So you can imagine, Njide's children too are older. One is gonna be 30, Chichi's a doctor now. We watched them all grow together. Part three coming up. So Njide Okonjo Udochi, okay. Um, Fred Udochi, an accountant, we all lived in Baltimore, Maryland together. We lived in Woodlawn. We lived in Monument Street. And everybody used to move around, visit their families. They, they, they too would go to Southern Maryland, take the kids. Ngozi's children were growing up. 
the, at the same time. Now, by the time every one of these kids grew up, they went to university, did different things. Ngozi's children went to Harvard University like their mom. One of Ngozi's children is very famous because he has a book. Okay, he wrote a book, a really, really great book that was adapted into a movie in Hollywood. And you can look all these things up. Okay, let's go back to their parents. Okay, Ogashi Uku is their village in Delta. And now that village has become very popular now because number one, their dad was the king in that village. Okay, and their mom was the queen. Now you all remember when they kidnapped her mom because some elements in the government or outside the government or opposition, I don't know who they were, but they kidnapped his, her mom just to make her resign and step down as the finance minister. Ngozi was like really down into some major corruption investigations at that time. So, okay, the ransom was paid. They released her mom. She did not resign. She stepped up her game because there was a lot going on. Now you guys remember Saludo, the CBN guy. You know, remember when Saludo was yapping her, calling her all kinds of names, saying she stole this, she stole that. That whole tangle between Saludo, the $20 million, and who else? Um, what's the name of that king that was CBN? Um, Sanusi and all that stuff. You have to pay attention to what's going on. I'm intelligent. I'm telling you what you need to know, okay, about things. So at the end of the day, why would I be jealous of Ngozi? You know, I'm not as close to Ngozi as I am to Njide, but I know them. I know the family. Because the family grew up in UI, and even though we all grew up in UI, we were too small. Not all the children were there then because they weren't born, you know? So what I try to tell you is that when Ngozi was running for World Bank, Obama and Biden did not support her, okay? So I felt like this is not a Biden or Obama thing. This is American foreign policy thing. America is really crazy about their foreign policy, you know? They don't want dual citizens and people who can spy on them, you know? Part four, I'm only doing part one, two, three, four because of um, Twitter people who will watch it in segments. So what I want you guys to know is this, okay, American foreign policy, you need to know about it. As a journalist, even I had to learn a lot about U.S. foreign policy. When you have citizenship for another country, the U.S. is so worried of who you're going to spy to. What I know is that Ngozi has a really good mentor in the trade organization, and I believe that person is Chinese. I'm not mentioning names. And that person is not a good friend of Donald Trump. So Trump coming into the picture is not the thing. It wasn't Trump that was stopping her. Before this whole thing started, remember what I said. If Ngozi is going for that WTO, they're not going to give it to her because of dual citizenship. One, two, foreign policy. I studied Obama and Biden when she was running for World Bank president. Okay, they could have supported her. She had the credentials. She had the credibility. But no, it's like they're wondering about this and that. At the end of the day, isn't it the same Biden that became president now? Let me tell you something. I'm not jealous of any Igbo people, Igbo women. I'm not jealous of nobody. Maybe I've had one or two things with some Igbo girls or what I said about they need to empower more people, you know, than being house girls all the time and Linda and all this stuff. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't hate Igbo women. Okay, and I don't hate Ngozi. I'm not jealous of Ngozi. Okay, I became a pharmacist and a journalist. I became an award-winning pharmacist. I got awards from the White House and I've done what I have to do. Ngozi's path has gone where her path has to go. She's become as higher as she wants and she can go even higher. Okay, when Ngozi was campaigning for that World Bank president, nobody looked her way. But when she started comp you know, campaigning for the WTO thing, you know, everybody was like, oh wow, look at the amount of money she spent on all those adverts and campaigns and stuff like that at the end of the day it was god that gave her that job no damn america no damn anybody because if you don't know about spirituality okay i'm an evangelist let me teach you that all right why was there only one candidate left so the south korean lady exited and that made way for ngozi what happens then who's going to be the winner they're going to have somebody else enter it's god that gave her god paved the way for her so please stop this bullshit about I'm jealous of her or something. I'm not into all that. I'm Dr. Kemi, a little liar. Be focused. 2021. One little addendum that I want to put on this is that when my dad was in University of Ibadan, when the Okonjo family were living there and the parents were lecturers and all, um, my dad was also a commissioner during the time he was in UI. Some of you know that already. My dad was commissioner for economic and financial planning you know, handling money for eight states. At that time, we didn't have states, but we're talking about including Delta, which they're from. Um, Western region was everywhere in Delta, you know. 
and at that time under Oyo and Dope and all that stuff that was back in the 60s and before the 70s when the states were created by Yakubu Gowan. So I want you to know the history of Nigeria. So the economic and financial planning, the special duties, the education, my dad did all that stuff. And many of you also don't know that Fela's mother, Mrs. Kuti from Ayo Kuti was also my father's special advisor of the you know, um, Department of Education, the Ministry of Education. My father was Minister of Education, Commissioner twice in Western State. So I think I'm going to have a seminar on history so that you can know more about the history of Nigeria. Um, one thing I want to say is with Ngozi Okonje Wale's family, um, there's this notion about money, 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 yeah, economic, financial, and all that, but the family, the father and the mother did very well. They were educated, they, they were filthy rich. Um, they weren't rich off Ngozi. They weren't rich off Njide, my friend. Njide is a medical doctor, by the way, in America. And I watch her come from public health um, to from Nigeria to America and do the public health thing and became a full-fledged U.S. doctor. Okay, I watched all these people grow up and everything. So that picture that you guys saw at Ngozi's house, that exclusive interview, I believe, with Arise News and some other media, that was her house. Okay, that was Ngozi's house. And the lady you saw standing, you couldn't see her face, that looked just like Ngozi, that's Nchidi. That had no shoes on. That's her sister Nchidi, the one that's my friend, the one that we lived together as neighbors in different places in Baltimore. So please don't ever save somebody, you know, you guys have a negative mind, stay, around, stay away from that negativity. Because I remember when I was tweeting all this stuff, everybody was like, oh, and Scammy is jealous. She's je I'm not jealous. Come on, you don't know anything. Learn from people. Be focused, okay? So that's why I always like to use the phrase, I go way back with these people. And if I start to tell you who I go way back with, you'll be shocked. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, so make sure you share the video. Oh, and one more thing. Ogashi Uku. Is it Ogashi? I, I always like mess it up. Ngozi's village in Delta State. Oh, by the way, Governor Okowa congratulated her on the WTO thing on his Twitter. And that's how it's supposed to be. She's from Delta State. Even if she's an American, a Nigerian, she's still from Delta State. And then the people of Ogashi Uku too can congratulate her. That's how it is. We have a lot of Nigerians in the diaspora serving in governments of other countries, okay? And we're congratulating them there. We can congratulate them, not this government, okay? All this Abike Dabiri diaspora stuff is all for clout, okay? If you took care of your own people at home, they won't become citizens in other country, serve in other countries. I mean, look at it now. Look at Sarah Tuata, Fanika is his ex-wife. That's the number two person to the Ghanaian president. Look at all these guys inside Biden's cabinet. Even Trump had Ogunlisi and all of them in his cabinet. You know, Nigeria's becoming mayors and congressmen and this and that. We're not even talking people that are born there, people that left here and went there. So at the end of the day, um, that village in Delta State, um, when Ngozi's father died, I think 2019, the king is one of her brothers now. So when that party goes down, you know, in the village, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the Okonje Wela family and the Okonje Uduchi family and the Okonje family. Chichi and Judy, everybody. Congratulations. Kemi Olunlayo, Lagos, Nigeria.